mess with her when she's mine And Kanye will watch his mouth next time So I'm gonna have to refuse If in comes Penelope Cruz If she is a bad girl, I'm sending her back Cause Lindsay Lohan is whack There'll be teardrops on my guitar If I end up with Amy Smart So Santa, for my gift Please send me Taylor Swift Hey guys, this is Brian O'Dell and I am here at the Secondhand Serenade concert featuring Evan Taubenfeld. How are you doing, man? What's going on? How's it going? Good, and did I get that right? You did. Oh, yes. Nice. First, time ever. First time, every time. So, uh, I guess I'll personally have you introduce yourself to our viewers and uh, tell us about your music. Um, well, my name is Evan. I used to play for Avril Lavigne. Um, and my music, I think, sounds a lot like... Uh, the music I came from. It's just really, really good pop music that makes you feel good. How do you get hooked up with like a superstar like Avril Lavigne? I joined Avril's band uh, when there were 12 out of the 14 songs on her first record. It didn't have a title yet. It didn't have an order. And her and I went around the country uh, in, with acoustic guitars introducing her. So as it got bigger and bigger and bigger and went on and sold 30, 40, 50 million records, I just stayed there. But that being said, I did get to see a lot of really, really cool things like private jets and uh, a tour where we're playing sold out arenas every night and, and traveling around the world. Uh, pretty first class, because when you're when you're selling that many records, the the record label wants to make sure that you're comfortable. Big breakfast buffets and really nice flights and life is good um which of course then makes starting on my own uh even that much more humbling because mm -hmm. uh it's, you, it's a little bit of a wake-up call when you go okay so uh where's my you know where's my driver and they're like excuse me like you're dry what are you talking about dude like you know get in the van here's your acoustic guitar and <laughs> go start you said it yourself that you you weren't it wasn't your music you were just a part of Avril Lavigne's products so what was it like to finally get your own album your own tour how does it feel now to come and be doing something called Evan Taubenfeld uh, and to go play a show it doesn't matter that there's only a hundred kids or 500 kids or a thousand kids because uh, I know that they're there for me mm -hmm. and that's really cool yeah. Uh, you know, when I walk into a venue and see even only five kids wearing one of my shirts, that's that's the coolest thing you could ever see or have. So you mentioned your fans. What kind of experiences do you have with your fans? You know, fans, like, the whole word implies, like, they're different than you, and that's mm -hmm. not true. We're all in this together. They're a part of this. I, I can't do this without them. I s spend as much time as I can at the end of every show and sign everything for every single person, unless, like, I have to leave and mm -hmm. travel. Have you gotten pretty good at signing autographs? Yes. In fact, I'm thinking about teaching my, uh, my, my band how to, how to fake them for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Speaking of that personal connection... <laughs> Yeah, no, it gives us more time to hang out. Since you kind of became a solo artist, what has been that never dreamed in a million years moment for you? With Avril, playing in front of 1.9 million people in Times Square was really cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, we, we played starting at 12 a.m. and one second, so when the ball hit, we started playing, and that was pretty insane. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, and I would look across Times Square and see myself during the guitar solo on the, the, the Jumbotron <laughs> above the cup of noodles. No pressure. So, <laughs> Oh, I didn't care. I was just like, that's really cool. <laughs> um, that was big, uh, but then on a much smaller scale, about eight months ago, I played in a place called Fond du Lac, or Fond du Lac, uh, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And my song unbeknownst to me had been like number one there for a month and we started playing my song boy meets girl and we stopped before the first chorus because we drag it out sometimes and no one was ready for this but the entire audience started singing the entire chorus wow and just kept going and and that to me was actually bigger and better than any of the other stuff i'd ever done because it was mine maybe the, now there was only a thousand people there instead of uh, 1.9 million but it was my song and that was really cool. And then I'm sure there are some not so glorious moments. So uh, what are some embarrassing moments you've had? My record label sent me to play at the Miley, well, the Hannah Montana 3 premiere. Mm -hmm. They were like, we're going to send you out there. It's the premiere of the movie. Like we're expecting like five or 6,000 people. You're a huge fan, right? 
huge fan yeah. huge and uh, I get to the movie theater and there's like this wall and there's like probably a hundred posters of me and 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 all these people all these people from the record label are there to greet me and like walk me in and t- and like I sound check and then they say okay everyone should be coming soon because the movie and there I mean there may have been three people there maybe including like the usher sweeping up popcorn and it's like no one like me playing to an empty place. That was really funny. Like you actually and still I went three sets. They were like, "You're gonna do one for the one o'clock, the three o'clock, and the four o'clock showing." And no one was at this theater. It was so bad. And they kept making you do it each oh, one. Yeah, yeah. And I did it with a smile. And and but it was just it was really incre- It was painful. And I did the same thing about a m- like a month and a half ago in Modesto. I played a big radio festival. And it was like 115 degrees outside. And no one yeah. came. And it wasn't just me. It was myself and We the Kings and and one other band. And we were all like in the backstage. And I just, I went onto their trailer. And I was like, this is the most brutal thing I've ever seen. They're, they were like, I don't even know if we should play. Um, and I went out and did an acoustic set. And it's like literally the whole town is like blocked and barricaded off. And there's like huge walls everywhere and there's like four people standing there <laughs> and it's so quiet you can hear like the the, the street lights switching you know in between songs how do you recover as an artist from that i mean how do you i mean that's got to be the most like humiliating it's thing not, it's not i think some artists get really humiliated and pissed off and i just think it's hysterical <laughs> it's like you, you yeah, you're, you're either in on the joke or you're not and <laughs> that is call that the worst experience right for an mm-hmm. artist that's still better than your best day pouring shots at starbucks what's the most trouble you've gotten into on the road i was playing with metro station at six flags uh-huh. and i went to do a signing and about two thousand kids showed up and they mobbed the place and the six flag security said this is not safe you have to leave like you have to go backstage so i let them walk me backstage and then as soon as they left i went <laughs> right back out to the kids and it caused the whole commotion again and they kicked me out of the park. We got in this big altercation with them because I sing when I was on tour with Metro Station, I would go on and sing Shake It with them every night. Mm-hmm. So I was going, you can't kick me out. I have to go sing. We're singing the big, the encore, the single. It's the last song. You can't kick me out. It's part of the show. And they were, you're out. You're gone. And they had, you know, three security guys grab me and they're taking me out. And, and luckily for me, uh, Metro Station's tour manager, who's this giant guy um, with tattoos everywhere, just kind of grabbed their head of security and was like, he's not going anywhere i don't like if he leaves then we leave and are you prepared to shut the whole show down and and i thought that was really cool um and and he just kind of like called the guy's bluff and he's like fine but you know he sits in the van and we will assign security to him and they're going to escort him when it's time for the last song and then he's gone And, and and they did and that was the compromise don't you just love security guards well, the best part was the whole argument over why we weren't able to sign was that they said they did not have two security guards to spare. They didn't have the bodies. But, they had three but then when I was in out. trouble, they had three assigned to me the entire night. And that's what I actually said to the head of security at the end of the night. I go, it's quite ironic that the whole fight that we got into was that you didn't have people to assign to me <laughs> to give back to our kids. Yet you had an extra person... You had a third person. You had a third person available to watch me sit in my van. <laughs> and I didn't do it, you know, I was like... In case you made a run for it, you're going to have three people chasing you down. So it was really silly, but, you know, that was it was interesting to be kicked out of my own show. Don't worry, there's plenty more where that came from. Come with me behind the scenes, backstage, and onto the tour bus to meet your favorite stars. We are backstage with Slipknot. I am here with my good friend, the American Idol, Chris Allen. I'll ask questions you've never heard before and show you the answers you won't find anywhere else. You said you're a Justin Timberlake fan. No. No? No. I mean, that wasn't you. What do you like about Katy Perry? Everything. Happy so birthday! Day, dear bra, ha, 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 ha. Huge meaning or self defining sort of thing. I think we just lost one of our interviews. Rate, comment, and subscribe for new videos every week. Reporting for YouTube, I'm Brian O'Dell. I'm the reason you're, you go on tour. You're the reason I'm here, baby.